Hello all YouTubers, what's going on? I'm the Weather Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for tuning back into this presentation for July 10th, 2019. As always, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell notifications. Never miss one of my videos again. And also, please look in the description for other videos of mine with superior and accurate weather content they won't find anywhere else. I am the weatherman that you can trust. And as always, as a way of doing it, please consider watching the whole video. Share this with your friends. If you have anybody that you know or love that lives from Texas to Florida, um, along the Gulf Coast, or even inland from there, just between Texas and Florida, and maybe like towards like the southern plains and the southeast they need to know about this this is we're talking about tropical storm and potentially hurricane barry today it is now called potential tropical cyclone 2 so let's get right into it and as always please consider sharing this with your friends right now winds are 25 knots so about 30 miles an hour with wind gusts probably around 35 miles an hour radius to maximum wind goes about 80 nautical miles from the center of the storm outward which is about 90 or 100 miles equivalent and you can just see a lot of models taken in the eastern Louisiana towards central Mississippi. Okay. And the Euro model is calling for a track like this. So a lot of the models are starting to drift away and maybe starting to head a little bit towards the east because the storm, it will be strong, but they're saying it might be a little bit weaker. Okay. The, the 1 p.m. advisory said like 85, 90 mile an hour winds. I think now it's going to be more like 80 or 85 mile an hour winds. But nonetheless, still heavy rain. Don't let your guard down. Pressure's between 990 and 1,000 millibars, which is pretty darn strong. Okay. Intensity guidance is a lot of models now taken to a Category 1 hurricane. So I think that that will hold true. I think we will still have a Category 1 hurricane. Um, let's go over some key messages. So tropical depression is expected later today, maybe overnight Thursday, into Thursday. Conditions are very favorable for the system to develop. Sea surface temperatures are around 30 degrees Celsius, right by the southern Louisiana coast where this might make landfall. Probably around 31 degrees Celsius, close to 90, if not at 90. So it could strengthen rapidly right before it makes landfall. Dangerous storms are tropical storm watches. And I do believe they're now hurricane watches. Yes, hurricane watches could be needed later today, but I'll show you those in a minute. And also very heavy rainfall. Let's look at the warnings and cone static images to show you the latest advisory track. Yes, and we do now have hurricane watches for the entire... Louisiana coastline, except for the very east part of it, like well north of New Orleans here, is still on, under a tropical storm watch. But yes, pretty much the whole Louisiana coast now is under hurricane watch. And you can see, even maybe Thursday afternoon, this might be a tropical storm. We'll see. I think like Thursday morning will probably be a tropical storm, bearing its way towards the north. See, there used to be two H's on this map. There used to be like an, or actually, there used to be an H here. And like, no, actually. There used to be like an H here as well. So the track was kind of moved as well. The 1 p.m. track. Actually, you know what? I can just find it here, can I? Yes, I can. The 1 p.m. track looked like this. I mean, it was taken to like western Louisiana, then curving a little bit far towards the west, back towards the northeastern corner of Texas. Now, it's a little bit farther east. I think the landfall spot is overall the same. But where it tracks after that... I think it's going to be farther east than it was before. So I think the landfall spot is still the same. Hurricane watches are in effect. Probably winds of about 80 miles an hour at landfall. You can see 30 mile an hour winds now. Moving to the west southwest at 8 miles an hour. And let's look at the European model. As soon as I can get this thing zoomed out. Alright. Landfall time. Saturday afternoon probably for the European model. I'm going to go th through this. And they're calling for a hurricane. As you can see right here. All you need here is to see purples on this map, and that's your hurricane. Okay, we definitely have that. Even the GFS now, which I'm going to show you right now, is starting to try to like itch its way towards a hurricane for this. And GFS has a more landfall to the east. This would be like a dead-on hit for New Orleans. Because remember, east of that storm, you're going to get that flow coming out of the south. Okay, New Orleans is like right here, and right to the east of the storm. And if we look at the GFS model... You go to the winds, and you're going to see some purples on the map. Not quite there, but boom. Right as it comes on shore, and even a little bit after shore. Purples here, we might have hurricane on our hands. And then where does it go after that? Well, it might kind of just drift on towards the mid-Atlantic. I think either way, I think the north, or the midwest, and potentially the northeast. I think the midwest will get struck by the remnants, but the mid-Atlantic has a chance to see the remnants as well. 
CMC actually has a landfall in Texas, very eastern Texas. Actually, it has a landfall right on Beaumont in Port Arthur, where Harvey was. Except Harvey went west, so they were on that that onshore flow. But now, this might make a landfall right on Beaumont, Port Arthur. And again, Gem Model also showing, showing a hurricane, if not maybe like hurricane force wind gusts. Uh, GFS Legacy, new model. I did make a video called the new weather model has been released. If you did not watch that, please watch that. We'll talk about this model right here, GFS Legacy. GFS Legacy actually has a landfall in the Biloxi in the, on the Mississippi coastline and then drifting towards the Mid-Atlantic. That's interesting because I thought the models were actually starting to drift away from that idea. But I don't know if the GFS Legacy is like a replacement for the FV3 GFS. I have no idea, but it's acting as crazy as the FV3 GFS did because the FV3 GFS used to have... Like crazy weather model ideas and that you are usually right, not right often. I don't know if this is like following in its footsteps, but we'll see. It could still be right. Still uncertainty here. And you see those purples indicate a potential hurricane. Let's look at windy.com now. Start analyzing these wind gusts. Let's just go to Friday. And you can see, just fast forwarding here, Friday, 8 p.m. in the afternoon. And I will show you when it makes landfall. Saturday, 11 p.m., we still got wind gusts here, 76 knots. But watch this. Bang! We just have all of a sudden like 75, 77 knot winds now. I was just looking at this and it said something like 92. So it must, like I said before, it must have went down a little bit. But still, hurricane force winds without a doubt. And again, GFS is kind of showing the same thing. Except a little bit farther to the east, just a little bit. Wave heights are going to be significant as well. And actually, we'll show you that here. Sustained winds, 75 to 85 miles an hour. Max wind gusts up to 105 miles an hour. Mainly, though, 95 to 100 mile per hour wind gusts are possible. I don't even know if they'll be even that high anymore. Uh, storm surge, 3 to 6 feet. Rainfall, 1 to 2 feet plus, 12 to 24 inches plus. Areas with the most concern, Louisiana, extreme east Texas, and Mississippi. And wave heights will be 15 to 20 plus feet. But now that the winds are starting to weaken, I'm not even sure if they'll even be that high anymore. But yeah, still 15 to 20 feet. Let's actually go back to the National Hurricane Center here. Rainfall potential for the U.S. And as of the latest update, it looks like the south central Louisiana coast is now a little bit over the water, 15 to 20 inches. But to a more widespread perspective, south central Louisiana could see 10 to 15 inches of rain. And that could be catastrophic. I mean, just look how far inland. We got 2 to 4 inches all the way through Missouri. 2 to 4 inches plus. So that's certainly something to worry about there. And let's go to the storm surge forecast inundation. I wouldn't be surprised if they lower this a little bit now because potentially weaker storm. It's still got, it's still going to like potentially rapidly intensify, intensify very quickly. And yes, yeah, so we still have Morgan City just southwest of Huma by Morgan City. Greater than 3 feet of storm surge. And we'll see if it occurs right at the time of high tide. It could possibly. Let's look now. Oceanic heat content. PTC-8, Potential Tropical Cyclone 8, is getting ready to move in this deep area of oceanic heat content potentially. Oceanic heat and deep oceanic heat. And if it can do that, it will strengthen more. We'll see because that's a that little patch near the Gulf Stream in the Gulf of Mexico. Could strengthen pretty quickly. Okay, and the spin is looking a lot better. Uh, but st I can see the spin, just don't see anything coming here on the northwest on the western side. But I definitely do see some spin in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. You see, do see an easterly flow here. I just don't. I mean, it's almost like this is going south. I don't see like no, like exactly what northwesterly flow on the back side of the storm system. I will be showing you other satellite images as well. But again, much higher oceanic heat than the 2017 experts say, so that, that could potentially be a hazard. hazard. Right along the Mississippi River, moderate to major flood stages now. Guarantee the storm's only going to make it worse. One to two feet plus of rain potentially. And look at this. Look at this huge area of moisture. Just no dry air to work with. No dry air in sight. And precipitation. Here we go. Let's make this a little darker. Let's look at the precipitation for the past 30 days. It has been crazily like above average in some spots. 
I mean, it's just inches upon inches upon inches. And let's look. Near Houston, actually, let's actually go a little bit farther east. Okay, I gotta make this a little bit later because I can't see some of these, where some of these areas are. All right, New Orleans, Lafayette, Lake Charles, all places where you've seen like four to five inches of rain potentially in the past 30 days. Let's just look at the, at the departures. I think that'll make it a lot easier. And the departures from normal are definitely above average. It's kind of frozen here, but uh, rainfall is just a few inches above average to say the very least. Let's actually go to departures. Here we go. Uh, actually, it's actually very low, but where it is above average is from Beaumont to Galveston to Houston. But actually, past 30 days have actually been really above below average. I mean, like, look at this. We're talking about like four to eight inches below average. So maybe we do need it. But look at this, this little port here, southeast New Orleans, has been like 4 to 8 inches above average. So it's like 4 to 8 inches below average and 4 to 8 inches above average. Or below and above, you get what I mean. So it's been kind of dry here the past 30 days. But if that's what happens in the desert. If it's really dry, that water can't really get absorbed either. It's just going to flow right off. Okay, so it's got like that sandy kind of mess there. So it's just gonna not really going to get to absorb. Look at the visible satellite imagery, and you can see there's a circulation, lots of convective activity. I just don't see it spinning. Overnight tonight, it will probably start forming together, coming together. And eastern Gulf of Mexico, highly unfavorable conditions, but where the storm is and expected to go, we still got those reds and oranges, or actually all reds, and that is highly favorable conditions for development. Let's look now at the natural color. You can just see how it's just spinning really nicely, but I just don't see like a defined area where of circulation, I should say. And it's going to continue to die to the west-southwest, and it's just going to boomerang up. But where and when does it boomerang up? It's still uncertain, but we're definitely getting a lot more information in. But very uh, circular storm, just not organized, and we definitely have a lot of convective activity. Rain will be the number one threat from the storm system. Storm surge is just bathing in this little area of weak shear. But you might see strong wind shear here and here because that's the winds from the storm. The storm is making its own wind shear. You can see wind shear on the back side, wind shear on the front side. So the storm is kind of making its own shear, if you will. So that's not the wind shear blocking the storm. That's just the storm's own wind shear. And you can just see on the water vapor loop, I just see like a blossoming area of thunderstorms. I couldn't even see really an area of spin at all. And I don't certainly don't see any wind shear coming in to try to, like, take a poop on this party, really. But, got the storm firing over in Florida. And the area of mid-level spin, I mean, it saw, we had seen down here in the invest itself, kind of stacked on top of each other. Helped the storm to develop more quickly as the possibility. I think it, if not, actually might have actually happened already. And let's look at the... Uh, weather.gov site before we leave and you can just see where we're going to have devastating tropical impacts potentially so tropical here it is actually this is what you want to see the warning if you want don't look at don't look at this because this is the 1 p.m. advisory but if you want to if you want to look at the National Hurricane Center advisory this is the latest one 4 p.m. Uh, but Thursday severe threat marginal risk of severe weather and fire severe threat as well. But let's go over to the New Orleans one real quick. This will this will tell you more. Heavy rain amounts 10 to 15 plus. Lafayette to human New Orleans might see 8 to 10 inches. It's gonna be something to watch. We need take cover. Texas to Florida and points inland up to about Missouri and Illinois. This is your time to prepare. Oh, if it's like oh, it's only gonna be rain. Well, it could still happen. There could still be devastating impacts. I'm telling you, you, you think it's funny until you're one of those cars that's stranded in the flooded roadways. I mean, I saw, I saw a video of a $70,000 beautiful Mercedes SUV stranded in the waters. I mean, you're risking your car, you're risking your life, you're risking other people that's in the car with you going through those flood waters. But besides that, just stay inside. And look at this. This is kind of like where the storm is right now, so to speak. I think it will intensify before landfall. Look at this, 31 near 32 degrees Celsius are the ocean temperatures right as, it, as uh, right as it's about to come on land. 
right in that little area on the southern Louisiana coast. Very warm oceans. Please just be careful, everybody. You need you need to respect nature, okay? Respect the wind, respect the storm surge, respect the rain, respect the waves, respect everything about it because it, it's gonna be a very dangerous situation. We've already had tons of flooding in this area recently. We've had tons of river flooding as well. Just please, oh, that's my watch going off. It's five o'clock. Um, but thank you guys. This is the end of my video. I am the weather dude. Signing off till next time. Please don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell notifications. Thank you for watching, guys. See you next video.